everybody want to win, right? That's right. Who, who want to lose? <laughs> Not me. I want to win, and I want to be around people that think like winners. Right. Yeah. Amen. I want to be around people that think like winners. I, I want to win, and um, I think about my upbringing. I wasn't very athletic. And I was always the last to be chosen on the team. Because the captains wanted to win. They saw me and they were like, no, she can't throw. We don't want her on our team. <laughs> but thank God he chose us, yeah. right? He chose us. He, he picks us. He doesn't look at us and says, no, I can't use you. I can't use you. He can use you and all of what you consider to be a weakness. God takes it, and he can use it in the kingdom. And I just bless God for that. So fighting and winning. If I was going to use a subject, stand together. There will be loss, but be encouraged and hope in the Lord. Amen. Judges 20, 1 through 3. Then all the people of Israel came out from Dan to Beersheba, including the land of Gilead, and the congregation assembled as one man to the Lord at Mizpah. And the chiefs of all the people of all the tribes of Israel presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 men on foot that drew the sword. Now the people of Benjamin heard that the people of Israel had gone up to Mizpah. And the people of Israel said, tell us, how did this evil happen? I'm I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to skip down to verse 8. And it says, all the people arose as one man, saying, none of us will go to his tent, and none of us will return to his house. But now this is what we will do, go to Gibeah. We will go up against it by lot, and we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand of ten thousand, to bring provisions for the people, that when they come, they may repay Gibeah of Benjamin for all the outrage they have committed in Israel. So all of the men of Israel gathered against the city, united as one man. So in these first few verses, um, it really speaks to unity. Um, we think about 400 men, 400 soldiers. Um, I really thought about you know, when you look at the city of Buffalo, we don't even have 400,000 people in the city of Buffalo, and we can't be on the same page. Right. Um, and we won't even go as far as the city of Buffalo. Let's talk about the church, right. um, the body of Christ in the city, um, that smaller, smaller population, but then let's look at even our immediate churches, that's even smaller, and then we can narrow it even down to our households. Some of us have two people in the house, Let's be united. We want to be united. Um, so just think about you know, what these people came to get together to do. And some of the verses that I skipped, and this, is, this story you can read in its entirety, but um, there was a Levite that came, and he told the story. There was a tragedy in his, in, well, I won't say his house, but this that happened to him. And he came and he told the story to these men, these soldiers and they were united. They had his back. And um, I wrote down, these, these are the ride or die crew of you know, support. I mean, you wanna talk about having support, he had, the, this Levite had the support of many. So when we think about unity, um, the, the definition that I, I, I looked up was being joined as a whole, being one, being in, all in oneness, um, so it's critical that you come together at one. And when you think about soldiers, they've trained together, they've been in the trenches together, they've you know, done a lot of things together. And the Bible is replete with scriptures that talk about being together. Um, it's, it's important that we be together, amen. We need each other. If you're walking around saying, I need no one, it's just me and Jesus, that is not biblical. That is not biblical. There are many scriptures that speak to you being unified. And I'll just read a couple. One is in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, 9 through 10. And it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward with their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. 
But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. And the other scripture that I wanted to bring to mind is 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. And it says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no division among you, but you be united in the same mind and in the same judge and the same judgment. So, I mean, these are just two scriptures of many that talk about being united. And um, in these verses, we talked a little bit about the Levite that came and told the story. And one thing I wanted to take note of is these soldiers, they ask, what happened? Before they took strategy and made plans and, and, and really started to think about, okay, how are we going to react? Get the full story. Everybody say, get the full story. Get the full story. So often somebody is, could be upset or whatever the case may be, and they don't get the full story. And one example I thought about is, um, if you've ever watched Family Feud and Steve Harvey is trying to read the question, somebody buzz in before the question is finished being read, and they're always wrong because they don't really know what the question is. You're just trying to be first. And that is not, this is just not wise, not wise to do. We want to get the full story. We want to make sure that we have the full story before we react. Get the full story. And in order, in, and the scripture talks about that. And in Proverbs 18, 18 and 13, and this, uh, this is out of the New Living Translation. It says, spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Yes. And in the Message Bible, it says, stupid and rude. <laughs> so we want to get the story. Don't respond before getting the story. So I just want to remind you that um, as we read the rest of these verses, I want to come back to the topic. Stand together. There will be loss. But be encouraged and hope in the Lord. So now let's skip down to verse 18. And I am um, close to being done. But we're going to skip down to verse 18 in Judges, the 20th chapter. Let's continue. It says, The people of Israel arose and went to Bethel and inquired of God, Who shall go up first for us to fight against the people of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Then the people of Israel rose in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to fight against Benjamin. And the men of Israel drew up the battle line, drew up the battle line against them at Gibeah. The people of Benjamin meant the people of Benjamin came out of Gibeah and destroyed on that day 22,000 men of the Israelites. But the people, the men of Israel, took courage and again formed the battle line in the same place where they had formed it on the first day. And the people of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until the evening. And they inquired of the Lord. Shall we draw again draw near to fight against our brothers, the people of Benjamin? And the Lord said, go up against them. So the people of Israel came near against the people of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed 18,000 men of the people of Israel. All these were men who drew the sword. Then all the people of Israel, the whole army, went up and came to Bethel and wept. They sat before the Lord and fasted until, the, until evening, that day until evening, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, ministered before it in those days, saying, Shall we go out once more to battle against our brothers, the people of Benjamin, or shall we cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will give them into your hand. And there came against, I'm going to skip down to verse 34. And it says, And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of Israel. And the battle was hard. But the Benjamites did not know what disaster was close upon them. And the Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel. And the people of Israel destroyed 25,100 men of Benjamin that day. All these men who, 
All these were men who drew the sword. So the people of Benjamin saw that they were defeated. So in this particular story, the Israelites, they came against the Benjamites, but the first day they lost 22,000 men. They sent up 40,000, they lost 22,000 men on the first day. After that, their response was, okay, Lord, we're going to go back. We're going to seek your face again. Maybe, this, I don't know if they had doubts or what, but we're going to go back. What do you want us to do? He said, go back. To go back and lose another 18,000. 18,000. So in two days, they lost 40,000 men. 40,000 of their elite soldiers. And the Lord tells them to go back. How many of us would go back? the next day. I mean, how often have you really felt like you heard from the Lord? You knew you had a word. I mean, the Holy Spirit just gave you a word, and it did not go as you thought it would plan to go. How, how do you feel? And then you got people looking at you going, mm-hmm. She said it was the Lord. They done lost. Now this is not working out. So imagine how other people are looking in. If you remember, um, do you remember the blind boy um, that was in the scriptures that was talked about? The disciples asked, who did sin? His parents or the boy? And Jesus was like, nobody sinned. This is just so my glory could yeah. be revealed. Yeah. But that's how people look at you when you, you know you heard from the Lord. And people are just like, well, if you heard from the Lord, there would not be lost. Who told you that? Who told you that you wouldn't shed a tear during your walk with Christ? Who told you you would not feel pain? Who told you that you, everything would be rosy? That everybody would like you? That you would not have to fight? How are you going to be in an army and not have to fight? How is that going to happen? It's not. It's not. Put your war clothes on. Get your little tissues. Dry your eyes. There's going to be some hard times. The, the scripture says they went in battle. It was hard. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But they inquired of the Lord. They went back to him. They cried. He, he strengthened them. They had to go back out. Send out 10 more thousand troops so you can defeat the bat, defeat the enemy, defeat the Benjamites. Ultimately, they defeated all of the Benjamites. I know I stopped that where they defeated 25,000, but they defeated all of them. But it wasn't through, it wasn't without hardship. It wasn't without loss. But we have to be united. We have to stand strong. Trust the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Ark of the Covenant was there. So they inquired of the Lord. We're gonna inquire of the Lord. We're gonna use some wisdom. We're not going to act on our emotions. We're going to get the full story before we go into battle. And we're going to hear from the Lord, and we're going to stay strong. Amen. We're going to stay strong in it. So I just thank God. I just think about, you know, how many times, as soon as you make up your mind, you go, okay, I'm going to serve the Lord for real. Yeah. For real, for real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to prayer meeting Sunday morning, 10 a.m. I'm starting to go to the 6 o'clock. PM um, Bible study. I'm going to 630 Bible study. As soon as you make up your mind, seem like. Here come tragedy. Here come tra But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I hear my mother so vividly. She'll say, girl, you better trust God. You better trust in the Lord. You better trust in the Lord. Where else are you going to go? Who else do you think is going to help you? It is the Lord God Almighty. It is his Holy Spirit that sustains us. It is the one that keeps us. He is the one. So I thank him for that. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And um, I just want to just admonish you just to be encouraged. And sometimes when it looks like things are not going the way we think they should go, it's because God's economy is not like our economy. You know, the word tells, tells us in Isaiah, 
55, 8 and 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are so are my high, my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Jesus told the disciples also in Matthew, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Oh also in Matthew, the Beatitudes, when you think about it, all these blessings, blessed are those, This one, the last part of it says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you and false, against you falsely for my sake. It's, you are blessed. You are blessed. And in our natural mind, we can't understand that. But we have to think with heavenly thoughts. We have to think about what God told us. Think about Job. And he. the scripture talks about him being upright and blameless. And he suffered a lot of loss. And when we think about what he went through, I was going to say every time he turned around, something else was going on. He didn't even have time to turn around. Yeah. It was like every verse that I was reading, it was like as they were speaking, yes. every announcement that came along, okay, oh, their house is burned down. Oh, and by the way, this one is dead, and that one is dead. You've lost all your cattle. He didn't even have time to turn around. It was like tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. But how will we respond when the tragedy comes? Who are you going to run to? We better run to the Christ, saved, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can cast our cares yeah. upon him. Because he does care. He does. he does care. And I think about um, in Job, in the first chapter, it also talks about how he responded. In the first chapter, it says, Then Job um, arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. Are we taking the time to worship? even through what we're going through. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken yeah. away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sin, did not sin or charge God wrong. But then in the second chapter, think about the support system. His wife was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of a foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good from God and not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lip. So I just want to encourage you to stand and hope in the, in the Lord and um, fight. We're going to have to fight and win. It, it's not going to be always rosy. It's not always going to go our way. It may not go as expected. And I just want to admonish you to do that. Um, one, a couple of scriptures that I want to encourage you with, and I'm not going to read them all, but just a few scriptures. Romans 8, 31. Mm. It says, what then shall we say yeah. to these things? If God is for us, uh -huh. who can be against yeah. us? Yeah. 8, 36, and 7. It says, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be, the soft, to be slaughtered. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thank you, Lord. So I just know that as we go through our sufferings, as we go through trials, it's producing something in us. And this scripture, I love it so much. In Romans 5, Romans is my chapter. I'd be encouraged. I'd be charged up when I read Romans. <laughs> when you get some time, read it. But Romans 5, um, 1 through 5, and it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by, by, by faith, we have peace with God, with our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith yeah. into his grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope in the glory of, of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God 
that we have been given the victory. Thank God that we've been given the power. Thank God for his grace and his yeah, mercy. Yeah. Thank God for him. And I just want to leave this prayer with you. Um, just as I was reading these scriptures. In Psalm 33. I know there's a lot of scriptures. But the word preaches itself. <laughs> but um, Psalm 33, 20 and 22 it says, Oh, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name let your steadfast love O oh lord be upon us even as we hope in you so I, I hope i've said something to encourage you just stand together there will be loss but hope in the lord Amen.